So Nicola Sturgeon has resigned and she said it's not because of immediate political pressures. But the truth of the matter is she has tied herself in knots over the transgender issue and in recent times that seems to have been her undoing, having given a number of different interviews in which she's flailed about not being able to answer the question of whether a double rapist should A, be let into a woman's prison and B, how to even describe Adam Graham stroke Isla Bryson as he or she is known. I think you just referred to Isla Bryson using the word her. Does that mean you do, in fact, think Don't she is a woman? Anything into I, I am trying to Correcting rationally to individual, look. But you started I, seeing I'm, her, and that has landed her in hot water. And it's also put her at loggerheads with people in the SNP because they think that the transgender issue is a huge distraction. They want to be focused on Scottish independence and Scottish independence alone. So the idea that she has almost fallen down this rabbit hole into being confused about which pronouns to use for a double rapist when it's clearly not a priority for the Scottish government or indeed the Scottish people to be focusing on that one particular issue. That has proved to be extremely challenging as far as the future of her leadership is concerned. The trouble for the SNP though is that that really does make life difficult for whoever takes over. At the moment the odds are on Kate Forbes replacing Nicola Sturgeon but as a fellow woman leader she's going to be caught between the devil and the deep blue sea when it comes to this issue of whether transgender rights should champion women's rights. Let women speak! And she's going to again be criticised by the feminist lobby, including the likes of J.K. Rowling and others, if they go down this path of allowing men to self-identify as women and therefore go into women's spaces without any medical evidence or otherwise. This is the key problem with that gender recognition reform bill and why it's unpopular, not just with people in Scotland, but also people in the SNP, because they think that it pushes transgender rights too far at the expense of women's rights. There are some people that I think have decided to use women's rights as a sort of cloak of acceptability to cover what is transphobia. That's going to be the thorn in the side of any person that takes over, this idea that actually this transgender legislation is in a mess. It's really hard to argue for it on television, as Sturgeon, who before she tied herself in knots over this issue, and particularly the issue of Adam Graham being put in a women's prison, was always associated with being very good at comms, very slick, a great operator on the media. The fact that she then wasn't able to explain her own policy and actually ended up contradicting herself will make her successors think this is not the hill upon which they want the SNP to die. And that's been the main problem throughout. It's not only that this transgender policy has been a distraction, it's also been that it has seen Sturgeon struggle to explain it, struggle to explain the logic of it. And then if you've got voters in Scotland scratching their heads saying to themselves she can't adequately communicate this policy or justify it in the face of fierce opposition and protest, that's very difficult. Let me be clear. This prisoner is not going to be incarcerated in court and bail, either short term or long term. With Sturgeon, as with any leader of the SNP, it's all about the popularity of the central message, which is an independent Scotland. So this is also difficult for Sturgeon. You know, she's hugely popular on the issue of independence, and she's tried to push a policy that is deeply unpopular not just with elements of her party, but also the people of Scotland. So almost for the first time ever, she found herself on a really unsure footing because she's trying to push something that her people don't believe in. And that's proved to be her undoing. She can talk about the brutal nature of politics, but you know, politics will be brutal. And TV interviews, like the interview she did with the ITV a reporter who kept on pushing her on this issue and then saw her come unstuck. Yeah, that's brutal. No, there is. <laughs> because that's political life. This you haven't is, answered that question. Well, that's not the point that we're dealing with that's here. That's the question I'm asking. Trans women are, are women. And if you're going to come up with policies that don't seem to make any sense to huge swathes of the Scottish population, then you're going to land in trouble. Uh, but so it's different for trans women? Well, yes. And I, I'm not... So they're not equal. The other thing about this for Nicola Sturgeon is the backtracking element, the idea of having to U-turn, which therefore makes her look weak. 
One minute she's insisting that Adam Graham should be referred to as she. Do you regard Isla Bryson as a she woman? herself as a woman. I regard uh, the individual as a rapist. That she should be known as Isla Bryson. She should be housed in a women's prison. <laughs> there is circumstances in which a trans woman uh, will be housed in the male prison estate. Is there any the context in which a woman born as a woman will be housed in the male estate? Look, we're talking here about trans women. And I'm now asking about women born as women. Uh, I don't think there are circumstances there, uh, but... So it's different for trans women? Well, yes. She then has to completely backtrack when reminded of the fact that it doesn't make any sense to anyone to have a double rapist housed with women prisoners, but also female guards. Then she looks weak because she, her, the entire plank of her policy platform is disintegrates before her very eyes. I heard the Chief Executive of Rape Crisis Scotland say this yesterday, I don't see how it's possible to have a rapist within a female prison. And so let me be very clear, I agree with that. The other thing that happened over the weekend, which I think possibly has influenced this decision, is the decision by the Scottish Prison Service to say, no, if we get an inmate in, we're going to judge them on their biological sex. We're going to look at what sex they were born as, and we're going to house them appropriately following a review. That basically drove a coach and horses through what Nicola Sturgeon is suggesting. Nicola Sturgeon is suggesting, effectively, because this is what the Gender Recognition Reform Bill says, is you've got to listen to the person who says, I am now a male or I am now a female and accommodate their needs on their say-so. The Scottish Prison Service was saying, no, that's not how it works in a criminal justice setting because we need to protect fellow inmates and staff. So if you get the prison service, it's almost like a microcosm for how this policy would play out. If it isn't acceptable in the prison service, then she's going to run into difficulties trying to enforce this legislation on other organisations that have to put public safety first. And at times that will mean women's safety and it will mean that the law simply won't work. That then blocks everything else out and that's going to be really difficult for a successor to Sturgeon. But unfortunately that's the legacy she's left.